Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It's about 6.30 a.m. And today we are going to film a day in the life. Um, and today is also sweet corn processing day. We did um, sweet corn. Okay, so my daughters, my three daughters and I were on vacation all of last week. Um, so right before we left, um, we harvested the biggest sweet corn and put that in the freezer. And so now today we're taking off everything else that's there. And normally on an average year, my sweet corn all gets ready the same week <clears throat> and we do two processing days. Or we might have one day where most of it's ready and we process it and freeze it. And then we might just have enough left over for fresh eating for another meal. But because it was dry this year, my sweet corn was inconsistent with how it matured. So it actually worked out fairly well for us to harvest some before we left. And then a week later, um, we have more to harvest. However, I do expect that some of today's cobs will be older than I would normally harvest it but we will cross that bridge when um, we get there. So we'll open them and if they're too old, like if they have dents in them already, um, then I'll know that the sugar content is no longer there and it won't freeze well and it'll come out of the freezer tasting terrible if the corn is too old. But I've been out here in the garden for about 30 minutes. I've drank my coffee, done some light weeding and I am now going to take off all the corn and by that time it'll be time for the kids to get up and for us to do chores and then we will start processing the corn after we milk the cows and all of that. So the best time to pick sweet corn is always as early in the morning as you can because um, the dews from overnight convert into sugar. So the sweet corn that you pick in the morning is going to have a much higher sugar content than if you would pick it later in the day when there is no dew on the corn anymore. So as soon as the corn is picked, though that sugar in the corn starts to break down um, and turn into a starch. And the, the trick is to getting good sweet corn from the freezer is to pick the corn and, you know, blanch it and freeze it as soon as possible before those sugars start turning into starches. Because if you allow the corn to sit for a day or if you purchase corn to put into your freezer that has been picked the day before, those sugars have broken down into so many starches that getting your corn out of the freezer in the winter time is going to be a huge disappointment. So to preserve as much of the sweetness in the sweet corn as possible, it's important to number one, take it off as early as you can in the morning and then preserve it as soon after you pick it as possible to keep those sugars for your freezer corn. All right, here's the sweet corn that I've got. <clears throat> it's a wheelbarrow full, which isn't too bad for a second picking. And I'm just gonna let it sit here in the shade and I'm gonna go up and have another cup of coffee with Elvin before he goes to work. And I will have Mitchell push this up front closer to the house when he gets up. Um, normally I would have loaded up the little trailer to hook behind the garden tractor and the little boys would have loved to bring this up to the house. But something happened to the little garden tractor. I think they may have ran it out of oil 
and the little garden tractor is out of commission so we will be using good old-fashioned elbow grease to get this corn up to the house. So after Elvin leaves for work, I spend some time making our bed and putting away laundry that we did yesterday and I was too tired to put it away last night. Okay guys, time to get up and do chores. I can tell that my body needs some nourishment before I go do chores, so I'm having a glass of milk. Boys! requested some milk with a little bit of maple syrup as a nourishment before we go outside to do chores. The cows are currently in the lower pasture, which is our bigger pasture, and so we milk them down here rather than bringing them up to the barn every day for milking. It's just easier with us doing the rotational grazing to have a spot close to their pasture to milk them at. So Brenda is our Jersey and she is our smallest milk cow and she's also the most gentle. So because this is Hadassah's week to help with the milking chores and Mitchell will do the morning house chores, um, Hadassah will get started with milking Brenda while I start with milking Norma. Norma is still our most headstrong milk cow and will probably always remain the most headstrong and it's just easier for me to milk Norma than it is for the kids to milk Norma. Norma also is not as easy of a milker, like it takes more arm and hand strength to get the milk out. And Brenda, the little Jersey, is a very easy milker. So overall, it's just better for the kids to get started with Brenda. And then as soon as I get done with milking Norma, um, we give her her breakfast. And then I take over for Hadassah and finish milking out Brenda. Um, Hadassah finds it difficult to milk the smaller back teats. Um, so you, she usually leaves those for me, but most mornings she gets her about three quarters of the way empty while I milk Norma. 
So as soon as I'm done milking Brenda, then she gets her breakfast as well. So the boys are going to head up and start to feed Tom and Jerry while Hadassah and I wait for Brenda to finish and then let her back out to pasture. So now we take the milk up to the barn in the house. Um, we need to refill the bottles for Tom and Jerry because they get three quarts in the morning and three quarts at night. So we fill the bottles and then we need to fill them halfway up again. And Tom and Jerry are spending their days out on the pasture with our steers now. So the last half of their bottle is used to lure them outside and then we finish their bottles outdoors. Head -butted it head butted you. Done. Tip it up, Harrison. I want to see what the elbow is. Mommy, look. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So back in the house, we work on straining the milk and putting them into clean sanitized jars and then taking them all into the refrigerator in our garage. We also mark the jars um, specifying which cow the milk was from and the date that it was milked. So breakfast is kind of everybody on their own this morning. Um, I am having some granola with fresh raspberries and some of the children are finishing off some store-bought cereal that we had bought to get Elvin and the boys through the week that the girls were on vacation. So it's Mitchell's chore to wash dishes this morning but he already left for work so I asked for a volunteer to wash Mitchell's breakfast dishes and Maxwell volunteered to do that. So while the dishes get done in the house, we get set up to get this corn blanched and cut off and in the freezer today. So first of all, I rinse my big pots and fill them and get the burners turned on. And then we put the scoop on the skid loader and bring that up to put all the husk and the cobs in and then we begin our husking party. Yeah. Mom, that was Harrison. <laughs> yeah, you can give that one to the pigs. The pigs will like that one. I ate some of it. You ate some of it? Yeah. I get the ones that I'll...
So as soon as we've got a pile that is husked, I start cleaning up the cobs, getting them ready to blanch them. Mostly I'm cutting off any wormy parts and pulling off any silk that the kids missed. And then as soon as the pot of water is boiling, I fill it with cobs and start blanching the corn. So as soon as the corn is boiling, we remove it from the boiling water and plunge it into cold water. The boiling water will stop the enzyme action that breaks the sugar down into starches and then the cold water stops the blanching process and this preserves the corn. Okay, you can put these over here now. Maxwell, bring me more corn, please. This stuff is colder. What is this right here? Okay, stop me from it. We need to wait until it's higher. Mom, this is colder. Yep, we want them colder. Oh, yeah. oh wait. If we draw on it and it's cold, okay. then it's Okay, here, you can get the hose and rinse this, Maxwell. They actually can't. Take the hose out there on the rocks and rinse that out for me. Is it good still? Yeah, give the hose to Maxwell for a minute. So once all the corn is blanched and cooled, it's time to start removing the kernels from the cob. I don't want parts of the cob in. Okay, Hadassah, hold it. Look at me. No, not your thumb. Your thumb goes right here on the blade and then put it at an angle. Yep. Can someone get me a cone? Right, Kendrick, can you bring the bucket closer? Can someone get me a cone? I can go over there. Then I just have to go. There you go, and then scrape it real hard. No, scrape it. You want to get all that out. Had to so look. Go like this, and then go like this. See all that stuff that comes off when you go like that? So we use a combination of different tools to cut the corn off the cob. We use knives. And then Harrison uses a little safety tool and Stacy is using a creamer board. And then when we're all done, we mix all of the corn together and put it into the freezer that way. And I will link the tool, the creamer board and the safety knife in the description. So Mitchell is using the hot blanching water and pouring it over the weeds that are growing where we don't want them and this will scald and kill the weeds. So now that the corn is all cut off, it's time to put it into some freezer Ziplocs and get it put into the freezer so it can freeze. Altogether today we got about 15 quarts of corn which brings our total corn in the freezer to about 30 to 35 quarts which is about exactly what we need to get us through until next summer. So it is about 11 a.m. and the corn is all put away in the freezer and everybody is going to take a little break and do whatever they want for a while. Okay, you get the break, I get to stay with it. So you could break any time. Oh, we need to get a pedal. Let's go. Okay.
so it's time to make lunch and while I work on making a stir fry using leftover rice and veggies I also wash together all of our corn dishes and the children help wipe and put them away before lunch. While the children clean up from lunch, I'm going to spend some time in my office. I'm going to read my Bible since the busy morning did not allow time for that and catch up on a couple emails. So my next project is one that I have been pushing off entirely too long. We have this medium sized upright freezer in our garage and it stopped doing a great job with freezing the meat that was in it. So we took everything out and we defrosted it and then we just let it set and forgot about it. But now we are getting a beef back from the butcher and I'm going to clean this freezer and plug it in and see if maybe defrosting it was the only thing that was the matter with it or if it really is junk and we need to throw it out. So I've got it cleaned up and I've got it running so I'm gonna put some water in and see if it'll freeze this shallow dish of water and if it does we are in business um, if it doesn't then we're gonna have to come up with plan B Just pedal. Okay. It's like my, um, like my. It's a spider. Mm -hmm. It's my spider. What are those wheels at the back? It's such a beautiful and breezy afternoon. I decided that I would have plenty of time to wash all the little boys' sheets and get them dry before evening. It's a beautiful afternoon and I'm going to head to the garden and have some peace and quiet and I'm going to plant a couple fall crops in this area where we harvested the peas and early potatoes. So I'm replanting some snap peas um, and these will just be for some fresh eating later on this fall. And I don't have high hopes for any of these fall vegetables that I'm planting just because the pest pressure is usually pretty intense in the fall. Um, I'm scattering some radishes here in this area. And even if we don't eat many of them, radishes are great for breaking up the soil. And any radishes that we don't harvest can stay in the soil and they will break down and create a great mulch for next spring. I'm also direct seeding some cabbages. Um, my germination rate when I direct seed is usually not really great, but at only $1.40 for 100 seeds, if we get half a dozen heads of cabbage from this, it will be worth it. I also tie up some more of my forest of tomatoes. Um, as the tomatoes have grown, they have um, pulled down some of my branches of tomatoes. So I'm just reinforcing these tomatoes and I don't, because I don't want them hanging on the ground and I especially don't want my tomatoes to lay on the ground.
So while I've been playing around in the garden, the children have been entertaining themselves. Um, the little boys are playing office. Hey boys, I found an apple out on, in the grass under the tree. I cut it for you. Have caramel for it? No, I don't have caramel for it. You just eat it just yeah. like that. They're a bit tart, aren't they? They'll get sweeter with time. No, you start at the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> This time I decide that I still have time to power wash the front entry since Mitchell had the power washer out to wash down the dog kennels. Um, I asked him to leave it out so that I could use it to uh, clean up the front entry. It's been very dry this summer which means we have battled a lot of dust that comes from the traffic on the gravel road in front of our house. So it's time to prepare some supper. I am using some leftover mash, uh, some leftover potatoes. I am going to mash them and then add some butter and salt and cheese. And then on top of the potatoes, I added some peas and some leftover barbecue hamburger or sloppy joe before I put it into the oven. So while our supper bakes in the oven, um, I help the boys straighten up the house. So since we're waiting on Alvin to get home from work for supper, we um, decide to hurry up make some coleslaw to go with our casserole of leftover peas and potatoes and meat. So it's finally time to gather for supper. Um, everybody is hungry and excited to catch up with their dad about his day and to tell them, tell him about their day. And then, of course, it's time to do the dishes again. And a few of us need to go outside and do chores. So evening chores are not as intense as morning chores. We just have one cow to milk and feeding of the steers and the calves. Oh, their gate's not open. Go anyway. Go anyway. Open the gate. So Tom and Jerry are led back into the barn for the night.
And then as the sunset and the cicadas sang their nighttime song, we played a competitive game of church softball where we actually lost the game, which eliminated us from the championships. So back home in time for bed, but of course the little boys need some more nourishment before their long night of rest. After the little boys go to bed, the house settles down and the older kids either sit down to read or watch a show. Elvin and I catch up with each other's day and that is normally the end of what is a very average August day here on the homestead. So that concludes today's YouTube video and normally by the time I'm done editing a day in the life video I feel like I have lived the same day twice and I really feel like it should be 9:30 at night um, even though it's not but I feel like I've lived that day because of all the editing and the voice editing that I do um, but thank you everybody that watches and supports our channel. We are thrilled that so many of you are here and supporting us this way. Um, remember anything that I've mentioned, um, the links will be in the description and if I miss any, just put it in the comments and I will add it as fast as I can or send it to you. Um, the link to my apron pattern and my ebook on childhood chores will be in the description as well and once again thank you very much for supporting our channel for subscribing for watching for sharing for commenting all that you do for us we really appreciate it <music>